The ladies of the aristocracy are being dressed for London's annual social season to find a good husband. All the blue bloods and ladies are competing today for an audience with the queen and her approval. Whoever becomes the diamond lady chosen by the queen will be the most sought after girl in the dating market. In the first season of the series, the diamond lady is Daphne, the eldest daughter of the Bridgerton family, who is happily married to the handsome and wealthy duke. Her older brother Anthony, who is still single, will also be solving his marital problems in the second season. As the eldest son, Anthony is responsible for the honor of the entire Bridgerton family, so he wants to find an impeccable marriage partner, so Anthony collects all the marriageable girls in town and arranges to meet them one by one. But at the end of each meeting, he ruthlessly scratched out the names of the noble ladies. These girls were either not good-looking or not well-mannered enough. Obviously, they were not Anthony's true love. Anthony was riding his horse early in the morning when a woman in a cloak galloped past him. Her valiant back attracted Anthony's attention. He immediately spurred on his horse and chased after her. The girl notices that someone is following her, and her desire to win is aroused. And so the two of them began a race, seeing a patch of grass in front of them. Anthony worried about the girl's safety and warned her. The next moment, she pulls on the reins and steers her horse over the obstacle. Anthony was once again amazed by her horsemanship. The girl also took off her cloak to reveal her pretty face. Anthony gave her a gentlemanly nod, but the girl just smiled and turned away. She didn't want to talk to strangers because she was afraid of being caught riding alone. After all, it wasn't ladylike behavior for high society. Kate and her sister, Edwina, have just arrived in London with their mother and are boarding at the home of their friend, Lady Danbury, for the annual social season. Exceptional posture. Beautiful smiles. Lady Danbury is very pleased with the young lady's qualifications. However, she is concerned that at 26, Kate is a little too old to be married and will have some difficulty in finding the right man for her. But Kate laughed and said the purpose of her visit was to find a good man for her gorgeous sister. So at the first ball of the social season, Lady Danbury brought the sisters to the Queen in the hope of impressing her so that they could be chosen as the Diamond Lady. The influential Bridgerton family also arrived at the ball. In order to help her eldest son, Anthony, find a wife, Mrs. Bridgerton deliberately and loudly states that Viscount Anthony intends to marry this year. As soon as she said this, the ladies of the aristocracy flocked to them. Kate, who was not far from them, recognized at once who Anthony was, surrounded by women. Viscount Bridgerton is wealthy, well-connected, and from one of the town's most illustrious families. He's very handsome. Yes. I suppose he is. As Edwina received a gentleman's invitation to dance and left, Kate went outside to get some fresh air. She was surprised to see Anthony chatting with his cronies about his choice of spouse and his attitude to marriage. Anthony said that he didn't expect love, but only a wife who would support him and take care of the children and be gentle enough to deserve the title of Viscountess. Kate was disappointed by this statement. However, just as she was about to leave, she accidentally made a noise and was spotted by Anthony. And then he quickly recognized the woman on horseback he met this morning. So he tried to ask her her name. Kate, however, was very disappointed in him for what he just said. I take issue with any man who views women merely as chattels and breeding. Anthony tried to argue that it didn't mean it, but Kate cut him off. I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. Your character is as deficient as your horsemanship. I shall bid you good night. The queen slowly lifted the girl's chin and named her this season's diamond lady. And she immediately became the target of competition from all the gentlemen in the room. Handsome, wealthy Viscount Anthony got the first chance to dance with the diamond lady. After a brief conversation, Edwina's mindset and culture matched Anthony's criteria for a wife. It took him one dance to decide that Edwina was his ideal wife. Just when love was growing between them, Edwina's sister suddenly appeared and took her away. You are not to go near that man, do you understand? Her sister Kate and Anthony became enemies after only two meetings. Knowing that Anthony only wants a virtuous wife, Kate doesn't want her sister to waste her feelings on such a man. And since Edwina was crowned this season's diamond lady, she was inundated with suitors. But the gentleman who met her had to be screened by her sister Kate. After rigorous background checks, Kate shortlisted the men who would meet Edwina. The finalists came to the door with flowers and gifts. The confident Anthony was still dressing up, but by the time he arrived, the queue was miles long and Kate had no problem turning him away. Anthony wants to make an appointment for tomorrow or the next day, but Kate says she's fully booked for the near future. If I think of it, she may be free. Oh. After December. Unless, of course, she was on her honeymoon by then. <laughs> Kate was determined to stop Anthony from courting her sister, but Anthony wasn't giving up that easily. The following day at the Royal Ascot, Kate had already arranged a date for her sister. 
and Anthony was late again. There was no room for him in the gallery. The man stood up to greet Anthony. Kate, as usual, is not pleased with him. Edwina, however, looked at Anthony with affection. Seeing that Edwina didn't reject him, Anthony played a trick. He said that in such a hot outdoor environment, a gentleman should prepare drinks for the ladies. Her partner was so anxious that he had to get up to buy a drink. Then Anthony easily sat her down next to Edwina. He initiated a conversation with her and had a great time. By the time her partner returned with the drinks, he was an uninvolved outsider. But once again, Anthony's opportunistic behavior upset Kate. When the game was over, Kate took Edwina away with her, ignoring the fact that Edwina was having a nice chat with Anthony. Keith's attitude was so harsh that Edwina was forced to leave even though she didn't want to. I meant no harm. I only wish to spend time with you. The most popular lady on the dating market hosts a party. All the men tried their best and even performed acrobatic stunts to win her heart as the most popular girl of the social season. Edwina is being courted by all sorts of men and her favorite sister, Kate, is keeping an eye out for them and the playboy, Viscount Anthony, was shut out by Kate. Even though Edwina has a crush on Anthony, Kate is determined to keep them apart. So, she deliberately didn't tell Anthony about the talent show. But Anthony got the news and arrived at the last minute before the end of the show to get a chance to read Edwina a love poem. Kate, of course, tried to discourage him but couldn't resist the look of anticipation in her sister's eyes. So she agreed. Anthony, however, felt that the poem was too sappy for him to read. Truth be told, I'm not, not a man of poetry. The words of flattery are beautiful and sweet, but they are also hollow. Miss Edwina, I could stand here and pretend to be someone I am not. I could pretend to want the very same things as you, but I would be lying. I may not be able to offer the display of passion that you truly deserve, but I assure you that when it comes to action and duty... Apparently his words had touched everyone in the room, especially Edwina, who was the object of his affection. After this night, she was sure that Anthony was a good man like her father, Kate, who has been doing her best to prevent this from happening, is so upset that she leaves the party and accidentally bumps into the valet. Lady Danbury noticed Kate's mood and came into the room to comfort her. She was sure that Anthony was a nice guy, given her years of friendship with the Bridgerton family. She hoped that Kate would not be so judgmental as to allow Edwina to miss out on a possible happiness. And while it's Kate's responsibility to worry about her sister Edwina, she should be thinking about her own marriage. But Kate said that as long as her sister was happy, she'd rather be single, like Lady Danbury, and live her life that way. Because I have lived a life. I am a widow. I have loved. I have lost. I have earned the right to do whatever I please, whenever I please, and however I please to do it. Child, you are not me. And if you continue down this road, you most certainly never will be. Soon after, Edwina received an invitation from Viscount Anthony to join Lady Danbury on a residential vacation. Edwina is both nervous and expectant, for she knows that this is Anthony's test for her. He wants to see if Edwina is fit to be a Viscountess. Kate reminds Edwina that this is also a chance for her to see if Anthony is fit to be her husband. Duchess Stephanie returned to her mother's house with her lovely son, whom she hadn't seen for a long time. Anthony also urges his siblings to do their part to make his marriage work, especially Edwina's sister Kate, who is a difficult nut to crack. In a show of pomp and circumstance, the entire Bridgerton family came to the door to greet the visitors. This time, Anthony specifically walks up to Kate. By the end of your stay, your opinion of me will be much improved. 